This book is Parashah, Parashat Noach, as we know. Everyone knows the famous story of Noach. What happened with the story of Noach? No? The big flood. Everyone knows the story, no? It's a big famous story. What ended up happening? There was a generation on the land. The Pasuk says, V'tishchat ha'aretz lifnei Elohim, V'timalei ha'aretz chamas. That is, and translates loosely, that the, the earth became corrupt before God. The earth was filled with lawlessness. As we know, that the people were doing whatever they want. They were killing, they were stealing, they were cheating, they were sleeping on people's wives, they were doing bestiality, sleeping with animals. Anything you want, you can name it, that's what the dog was doing. Anything you want, going around, doing whatever they want. It was, a, it was a world full of chaos. World full of chaos. And in the world full of chaos, you had one person, Noach, Ish Tamim, Ish Tamim Tzadik A simple person, Tzadik, a righteous person in his generation. We'll talk about it a little bit later. But we see that we know that this, this nation was, <coughs> was uh, what's it called, was, was extremely bad. The things that they would do is unfathomable. And this ultimately would let God to destroy the world. He said, I can't take it. As you know, the Midrash tells us, why did Hashem, why did it, what was the main reason He destroyed it? It wasn't the sins that they were doing towards God. Because there was a generation that didn't have any, they didn't have 613 mitzvot. They had the seven laws of Noah. They didn't have so many mitzvot to do. So how many things could they, don't kill, don't steal, everything, one of them, they, they broke. Hashem said, when it comes to between a person and another person, that's where I draw the line. When you guys start having no respect for each other, you guys start killing each other, stealing from each other, sleeping with each other's wives, doing everything like that, then I draw the line. Hashem comes and says, I need to destroy this generation. One light in the generation, Noah, will take him, his family, we'll build an ark, we'll save him and the animals, and we'll go and we'll erase, erase the world. And we're going to start new from Noah. We can't. Now, what most people don't know about this generation, about the generation of the flood, is that they lived a life of abundance. Chazal teach us that the life of the, of the people who lived in the flood, they had everything you could possibly imagine. They didn't have to work. Everything was provided for them. The land was giving crop that you can't even imagine. Every one of them lived 800, 800 plus years. They were living a crazy amount of years. Noah was how old when the flood started? 600. He died at the age of 950. Imagine, imagine that. We, if we're lucky, we get to 80, 90, 120. If, we're, if you're a Chinese guy drinking tea all day and you look like a Mikhail, 120. Imagine they're 950 and they never aged. They never aged. Never aged. Never got sick. Never aged. Nothing bad. No diseases or nothing. They're going strong. And not only that, they were born full. They weren't born babies. They came out the baby. What's up, my brother? What's going on? That's what they came out. No way. man, that's what they came out. The Bidrash Rabbah says about Yitzchak that he was the first baby to ever exist. The first crib that ever existed in the whole world was in Avram's house for Yitzchak. He was the first baby to ever exist. No sickness, no oldness, no Yisurim, no uh, punishments in this world, nothing. They went through 950 years, 900 years, nothing you can imagine. Nothing, 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 nothing. Everything they could ever imagine. As we know, the Bidrash tells us that Avram Avinu was the first old person. Why? Avram Avinu and Yitzchak, they looked very similar. So when they would go out, they didn't know who was the son, who was the father, because they looked exactly the same. So Hashem prayed to, I mean, Avram prayed to Hashem, he said to him, make it that one of us is going to get old, that people can discern who to give the respect to, who to give the honor to the father. And Avram Avinu was the first old person. Come Yitzchak, she's a generation, that they never do tshuva, they never do repentance. They sin, they don't do nothing about it. Says, bring Isurim, bring suffering in this world, so people are going to go, go t- towards your ways. And the first person who got Isurim, Yitzchak, what happened to him? He became blind. After the children were born, he became blind. As we see, the Yaakov comes, he touches the arm, became blind. And who was the first sick person in the history? Yaakov Avinu. Why? Says, how is a person going to know if he's going to die? Back in the day, how people die before Yaakov Avinu? Achu, they would sneeze, and Shabbat Shemol, Ad, Yit Gadal, Vit Gadal, Shemir Rabba. I like that. That's why we see when a person sneezes, we say, La Briut, to your health. Why to your health? I sneeze to your health. If anything, when he comes out to the bathroom, you tell him number you. He's sneezing, now you're telling him number you. What happened? Ah, because they used to die like that. The guy, you never know. All of a sudden, he's talking to you, he's sitting down, having a sandwich, he's talking to you about something. Be done. Ah, you used to have actually one of the over here. Call it, what can you do? That's it, gone. Comes Jacob Avinu and says, But how is he going to know to say bye to his children? How is he going to know to write a will? How is he going to know to leave them with departing messages? Something to let them know. As you know, Jacob Avinu. When he became sick at the end of his life, he called all of his children, he gave them brachot, he gave them guidance, before he departed from the world. So he was the first sick person. But before that, times of Noach, no one got sick, no one got, no one became old, no one got any suffering in the world. Everything was, everything was beautiful. And on this, you have a question. Everyone always asks this question. Let me ask you a question. In my shurim, we always talk about the concept of Hashem, all He wants is for you to love Him. So, what's he going to tell you? Imagine now, a guy goes on a date with a girl. 
He wants the girl to love him. So what, do you, what advice are you going to give him? You want the girl, the girl to love him. Go and tell her, hello, you're staying home Tuesday night. I don't want you to take, take away your phone, take away your TV. Everything is gone. Staying in the room. She's going to say, who's this guy? Thank you. Here's the door. Bye-bye. You want her to love you? Come with flowers. Come with jewelry. Come with a dress. Oh, I was in the mall today. I bought you this nice dress. Oh, I saw these diamond earrings. I was thinking about you. He comes with flowers. Ah, this is the way the girl's heart. Come and says, ah, Hashem wants you to love him. Yeah, I'm going to shower down the gifts. Just give me gifts and I love you, Hashem. That's it, right? But we see from this door, it's not true. They had everything in the whole entire world. And ultimately, what did they do? They disregarded Hashem and went completely against him. Why? I'll give you a mashal that I heard from time in the shiur many years ago. From my learning of mine. He says, there was a guy in Manhattan. A very courageous guy, healthy guy. Liked to go running, liked to go do all these type of competitions. He was one of those guys that he heard about world records. He always wanted to break them. You know what I'm talking about? One of those guys, uh, every time you have a Guinness World Record, he always tries to break it. You see him with 100,000 bottles. What are you doing? I'm this time. Everything you could possibly imagine. <laughs> One day he's reading, he sees 99 floors is the highest amount of floors anyone ever climbed, meaning up a, up a flight of stairs. He knows there's one building in Manhattan with 100 floors. So what does he do? Gets his tights on, gets his uh, running shoes on, he starts to stretch, starts to do the hip things, goes to the building, walks over there, he starts to go, yalla, let's go. Goes up the stairs, starts running. 20 steps. Still going, okay, the, the excitement is in him, 25 steps, 35, 40, 50, 55, 60, now he's slowing down, you see him already, already going, 70, 80, finally he gets to 100, he's so excited, he runs out onto the roof, and he's sitting over there, he's dancing, he's singing, Ooh, I made it, I broke the record, I broke the record, after a couple of minutes of dancing and singing, he turns around to realize that the door is one-sided, he's stuck, no one is with him. No one to call, he looks at the cell phone, no reception, nothing to do. What is he going to do? Looks around, the whole roof is empty. Looks down at these people, look like, like tiny little ants. So what does he do? What is the only thing he has on him? Takes out the wallet. It's like a cash. He sees the hundreds, fifties, twenties, and ones. What does he throw? The ones. <laughs> Takes the ones, throws the ones. Guy passes by, picks up the one, doesn't even look, puts it in his pocket, walks away. That guy says, okay, I ran out of ones, throws the five. The guy walks by, picks up the five, and runs away. 20, 50, 100, everyone is coming, picking it up, and running away quickly. He's like, what's going on over here? Finally, he gets frustrated. He comes, he kicks the wall, <laughs> breaks the corner of the wall, takes a little tiny rock, throws the rock down, hits somebody in the head. I looks like, so what's going on over here? He says, help, help. And this is Amashad. If life for Hashem will give us only blessings, 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 we never look up. We take the blessings, we, we run away with it. Uh, we, don't look, we, don't, we look left, right, no one's going to stop me. Yeah, let's go. And they run with the, with the blessings. But if a person gets sometimes a little tiny rock or a little tiny left for me, a little slab, that's when it causes him to say, oh, you know what, let me look up. Let me see what's going on over here. And that's what causes a person ultimately to find the real happiness. We know that a person in his life, you know, say, this is a famous question. Why does it have to be any type of suffering in the world? Why does it have to be any type of punishment? Why, why did Yitzchak ask for this? Because if not, no one would ever look up. They would go through their life and they never find Hashem. They would never have any reason to say, wait a minute, let me, let me, let me check my actions. Let me see what's going on over here. Or well, sometimes when a person gets a little stab, a little slap or something like that, what ends up happening? He starts thinking, okay, why did this happen to me? Why did it happen? And then he starts thinking, he starts thinking about Hashem. Starts thinking about Hashem and says, okay, let me think why. And then he starts getting closer and closer and closer. And that's the ultimate good. A person doesn't understand that Hashem, everything he does is for the best. It's for the best. 100% for the best. And ultimately, even there, even the suffering you're going through right now is for the best. Why? Because ultimately, it's going to bring you to the point where you're going to be Makir Hashem, where you're going to know Hashem and have Him in your life. And like we said previously, there's no life without Hashem. Living a life without God, without guidance, is not real life. Hashem says, I need to get you to the point where you know me and live your life with me. Because I know I want you to be happy. I want you to live a happy life. So that's what I'm going to do to get you over there. And we see that there was a story that I heard this week. And the person who told the story, when he told the story... When he told the story, he didn't uh, to, the, to the mashal that I'm going to bring, to the moral of the story that I'm going to bring right now. He was, he, he, he was a that brought on the story, and when he brought on the story, <laughs> when he brought on the story, he was going to convince something else. But he brings on the story of Rav Shach, one of the biggest rabbis in Art Israel. We know that uh, one time there was uh, Tilim, missiles coming down in Art Israel, and what happened? And they came to Chav are we going down to the bomb shelters, what's going on? He says, Kevin, do we have the Rav Shach over here? Don't worry, nothing's going to happen. Look at the Gdullah of Rav Shach. How big Rav Shach was. Comes Rav Shach one day, very old, he was a doll, everyone who, everywhere he would go, people would want to kiss his hands, everything. I met, Kavod. Walking to Yeshiva, he says, I want to meet all the orphans. Bring me all the orphans, I want to sit down and talk to every single one of them. All the orphans come around, the Rav Shach, of course, they're going to go meet the Rav Shach. 
All the orphans sit around the table, talk to them one on one, make sure they're getting what they need, make sure they have clothes, make sure they have food, make sure they have money. Everything provided for them. As we know, orphans, they need extra because they don't have parents. So Hashem says, I take care of them. So he made sure he's sitting down, talking to them, giving them that extra attention. At the end, when he leaves, he goes to the Rosh Hashiva. He tells them, listen, there's one guy over there, 20 ben, am, 20 ben Amoni, let's say. When I'm saying the name, he says, this guy over here, I want you to take extra, extra special care of him. The Rosh Hashiva says, of course, we take care of everybody. Every one of them we take care of. We make sure he has food, he has clothing. Up until the Khatuna, we take care of all of them. Arab Shach tells him, no, no, not only to the Khatuna. Even further, for the rest of his life, I want you to promise me, if you respect me, to take care of this kid. Always to make sure he has everything he needs. The Rosh Hashiva says, for, the Rosh Hashiva says of course, for you, Arab Shach, anything. But can you explain to me what happened? He says, I'll tell you a story. He says, when I, was, when I was a kid, I was very, very poor. And I only had two shirts. I would wear one shirt. That night, I would wash the other, I would wear the other shirt. And that's how I live my life. One shirt, another shirt. One shirt, another shirt. One day, unfortunately, the white shirt got ruined. It got ripped. And I couldn't fix it. I only had one shirt. And I was too poor to buy another shirt, and I didn't know what to do. So I just wore the one shirt, and every night I would clean it and dry it and wear it every single day. And after a while, what ended up happening? My only white shirt got ripped. Now I was very embarrassed. I was very embarrassed to go to the shiva. People are going to see me with the white ripped shirt. They're going to think, what's going on over here? I was met my shan. So what would I do? I would make sure that I was the first one in and the last one out. And I would take a seat all the way in the corner, facing the wall, facing the women's section. So that way no one would see that my shirt is ripped. And every day continued like this. And he was there from the first one in, last one out. One time there was a cleaning lady over there. She was cleaning. She sees him sitting over there to the end. She comes and she asks him, what's going on? I understand. I see you're always the first one in and the last one out. He tells her, what do you mean? Torah, 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 Dusha, the Holy Torah. I cannot get away from it. <coughs> he tells him, really? I'm not buying it. She says, I see you because I clean up the women's section. I see you facing the women's section. Everyone else is facing the other way. What's going on over here? And he, after a little bit back and forth, he tells her, listen, I'll tell you the truth. I'm embarrassed because my shirt is ripped and I, and I don't have another shirt. And I don't want people to see it. She says, what's your name? He tells her the name. She goes, okay, no problem. The next morning, Rav Shach comes. He sees uh, two shirts, two white shirts waiting for him, brand new. The woman bought for him two white shirts. He says, the feeling that I had that day with two, no two non-white shirts, is if someone would roll me a check for $10 million. It was the best thing anyone could ever give me. You know who that kid is? That's her grandson. That orphan that told you to take care of him, that's her grandson. And I owe him a lot of akarat atov. I owe him a lot of appreciation, so I want you to promise me you're going to take care of him extra special because the way she did for me, that I had when I was chaserli, when I was missing for me, that she gave to me, I want to make sure he always has one chaserlo. Now from this story, one, we learn the, the, the immense, powerful message of, of appreciation and the gdullah of shach. But I heard this story and I heard another side. I said, Akash Baruch we're talking about here one of the biggest tzaddikim to ever live in our generation. That's who passed away recently. One of the biggest tzaddikim to ever live in our generation. Hashem couldn't give him white shirt. Hey man, we're talking about a very couple of gush. How much is a white shirt in Israel? 20 shekel. How much does it cost already? Couldn't give him white shirt. Why? Why? Back to the point we're talking about over here. If he didn't have that rib shirt, guess what? He may not have been the first one into the Bet Midrash. He wouldn't be the first one in and he wouldn't have been the last one out. We don't know. But because he was the first one in the first one, the last one out... He was able to learn more Torah and learn more and more and more and more. And ultimately, he reached him to the point where he became the Gdola Dog, the high, biggest rabbi. Why? All because the rib shirt. So sometimes you see two messages you learn from one story. One, the, how much it is to appreciate something, how important it is. Another thing that sometimes Hashem gives us a little bit of suffering, but that suffering ultimately is going to lead us to our greatest good. That suffering right now is going to be hard. But always remember at the end of the silver lining. At the end of the silver lining, know that Hashem takes care of everything. A person who's in a hole, he doesn't see the light, he's hard for him to get down. But if he knew that the next level, the next step was going to be when he gets out of the hole, then okay, I'm, I'm going to go through it and eventually I'm going to get to the end because he knows it's coming. And the same thing with everything. A person who goes through suffering, he has to know. I'm going through this right now, but I know that it's going to pass. Everything's going to pass. Ultimately, I'm going to get to where I need to be. And that's the idea that we learned from this beautiful, beautiful story. Now, obviously, I said in the beginning, tonight is the Haskara, the Yord site. And I want to talk, focus on another point that is the essence of who Chama Vajra really was. 
We see in the parasha, it says, Noach haya ish tzadik bedoratav. I'm mad at him. He was a righteous person in his generation. Rashi quotes Masechet Sanhedrin, Dav Kufchet over there, and he says, over there, we see there's two tzadim. There are, there, are, there are rabbis who take it to appreciation and say he was a tzaddik in his generation and everyone was wicked. He came out and he was a tzaddik and there are some that learn it to his discredit. To say he was a, in his generation he's a tzaddik but if it would have been in the generation of Allah then he wouldn't have been a tzaddik. Why? Why? Why would he have been a not have been a tzaddik in the, in the generation of Allah Avinu? Let's look at the story. Hashem tells Noah, I'm going to bring a flood to the land. Right? I'm going to wipe out the whole earth. I want you to go build an ark. And I want you to take two of every animal and seven of the ones that are kadosh and all these laws. And what does uh, Noah do? Not seven Ishmael. Whatever, whatever Hashem says, we're going to do. But never once did he say, Hashem, maybe we can save the nation. Maybe we can try and do something, pray for them. Go and do, go to the ma'anam, to care about them. They meant that according to this interpretation, Noah didn't really invest too much into the generation. He said, okay. Hashem made up his mind, that's it. Didn't he ask them to come to them? He told them, ah, God is bringing a flood, come. But he didn't, I, I tell you a story, to answer your point. I was speaking to a friend of mine, unfortunately. I heard that uh, he went a little off. A little off the derech. And I called him. And I asked him, I told him, listen, we're good friends, I want to know. I do this, this classes and everything that I do, because I truly care and I want to help people. I, mean, I want to help another you dig get closer to Hashem. I told him, having been on both sides, like I've been on both sides, right? And now having been on that side, it's okay, you're going to come up, don't worry, I'm not worried about you. But what can I do to get to the hearts of these people? What can I do? Who get themselves in the darkness? How can I take them out? What can I show them? And sometimes they get frustrated, they get so hard for me. Today I heard some news about a friend and it, it broke my heart. It broke my heart. A friend of mine, Lives in uh, Florida. He's dating a non-Jewish girl. Kill it killed me. It killed me because I knew that I couldn't do anything about it. I couldn't do anything about it. I can't stop it. I can't do anything about it. Does it affect my life? No. Does my life change? No. Anything happens to my children? No. But it hurts me. You know why? Because it hurts the Kadosh Baruch Because it hurts Hashem. And I can't. I can't. I would just. I was. It bothered me. Can I? Just, my wife was looking at me. What's wrong? I said I can't. I can't describe the feeling. I'm bothered to know that my friend is like this. And I called his other friend, I told him, what can I do? And he told me, you want to know what you can do? Tefillah. Pray. You want to reach these kids? Nothing you're going to say is going to do it. And nothing you're going to do is going to do it. Only one thing that can help you reach their hearts, and that's to pray for it. To pray to Hashem that He's going to be able to help you bring this person back, or to bring this person back. Just bring them back to pray. So you're right. Noach may have told them, yeah, let boy, come, don't leave the girl, or whatever, come with me. But how much clock does it have? Imagine I call this kid right now. Listen, you're dating. I go, yeah, you're dating a non-Jewish girl. Yeah, I'll leave her. There's so many other Jewish girls you can be with. What is he going to tell me? Ah, 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 ah. Hang up the phone. Yeah, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Next time I call, ignore. Or I get the custom text. Uh, call, can I call you back later? I never get a call back later. It's been already six months. I've been waiting for a call back. Never got a call back. <laughs> Say, wow, I'm waiting for Mashiach already longer than you. <laughs> and listen, long story short like this. How can you do it? Tell me to feel out. Comes Noah and says, oh, let's go, come on, everyone to the ark. He says, okay, listen, everyone, uh, this guy's going a little cuckoo, it's okay. He didn't come to Kosh Baruch Hu and said, Hashem, let me, give me the, the capability that I'm going to be able to, to, to reach them, to penetrate into their hearts, I can help them understand. They didn't say that. Aram Avinu, on the other hand, this, the day he got his brief, the third day of his brief, which is the worst day, it was a very, very hot day. You see three people, he told Yishmaelim, he thought they were people from uh, Arabs, Biklal. He told him, come, come, come. He had a breed and he was, uh, okay, imagine he's almost 100 years old with a breed milah, dying pain, burning heat outside. He's waiting at the, uh, the edge of the oil, waiting for somebody to pass by. Three Ishmaelim come by and he's sitting over there washing their feet. Washing their feet. Imagine, imagine to yourself right now, forget it, a Jew comes to your house. One of your boys comes to your house. Boy, he's like, come, you bring him a little bucket. He wants to see me. He wants a Chinese woman over here. Somebody, ah, what do you want? Which one do you want? Gel? What do you want? SNS? Russian gel? What do you want? Washing the toes. Imagine. Allah was washing their feet. This is people he told were Arabic clan. Come and come. How much more so for you, Dean? How much did Allah wanted to do for the nation? That's what he's known for. Chesed. That's what he was known for. To go out and do for the nation. He says, if you compare Noah to Avram, 
No comparison. That's why he was a tzaddik in his generation. According to this mandama, according to this opinion. According to this opinion. Now, why are we saying this? What's the essence of Khamavadya? What's What was Khamavadya? What was Khamavadya Gdullah? What did he do? He loved every single Jew you can't even imagine. He did things, Ishtabak Shemul Ad. The things that Khamavadya did for the Jewish nation, nobody can match. He was a gadol, he was such a great, that he wasn't meant for this generation. Mehmet. His Gdullah, his Chokhmah, the way he knew Torah, the way he was, his greatness was from generations of past. People who are, can't even fathom his, how, how much he was holding. And everything he did, I'll tell you a couple of stories, just because of the day. There was one time, Khamavadja unfortunately had a health condition, that to go into surgery, he wasn't feeling good, they took him into the car. The day prior, there was a woman who had a doubt if her husband, if she's, if she's single, not single, if she can get remarried, and she, she wrote a letter to Khamavadja. Whether she's considered, an, uh, if she can get married or not, she's allowed to, she's considered a Kudesha, she's considered sanctified to another man or not, because her husband never gave her a get, she doesn't know what to do. <clears throat> On the way to the hospital, he gets to the hospital door, he tells his driver, take me back. She says, what do you mean? You have to go to surgery, what are you talking about? She says, no, 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 take me back. Take me back right now. Obviously, the, the, the guy didn't argue with him. Got into the car, drove him back home, what did he do? He finished writing the mikhtav. Let me take the woman. To, to take her. You're 100% kosher. Go and get married. And then he went to get the surgery. Why? He says, I couldn't let her wait another day. Forget that I'm suffering. Forget that I have to go to surgery. I don't care. I couldn't let this woman wait another minute. And I'm suffering. That's one story. Another story. There was once a mikveh they made in a new town. They built a mikveh. They invested money to the mikveh. And they were hoping, build the mikveh. The woman is going to come. First day they open, no customers. No one. Second day, third day, fourth day. See, already a week, two weeks, three weeks, no one is coming. The head of the mikveh, the woman who head of the mikveh, she calls Khamavad and she tells him, listen, what are we going to do? So what did do? He got on a bus, came over to this neighborhood, walked over by himself and started knocking on doors. And random people's doors. Until the wife entered the door. He said, please, you don't know how important it is to get the mishpacha. You don't know how important it is the purity of the family for a woman to go to the mikveh before she with her husband. And he went through everything. Door by door by door by door. A week later, the rosh, the, the head of the mikveh calls him. How about to stop? We're jam-packed. You have no more room. How much How much was Moser Nefesh? How much? Last story. This is the final story. We're going to end it over here. I heard the story today. From Ravi Gar Cohen. Ravi Gar Cohen. A beautiful story today. This is a story over the Chamavad that used to give a shiur once a week in Petach Tikva for 20 guys. Yeah, Pilsen Israel had to travel, get on a bus and travel to go for 20 guys. Not 20 guys who are Khalif, not 20 guys who are holding, and uh, 20 guys, Balebatim, guys who are working guys. Huh? So these children asked him, Abba, I don't understand. Why, why, why are you going all the way over there to give a shiur to 20 guys? Chamavad, you know, come on, 20 guys? He says, I'm not only thinking about them. I care about them. I care more about their children and their grandchildren. And going there, seeing them, being there, sh giving them whatever I can, helping them whenever I can. You're right, they're older. They're not gonna maybe, maybe I'm not going to be able to move them so much. However, the children and the grandchildren, I'll have a big hashpa. Ravi Garkon says, one of those 20 guys was who? Ravi Garkon's grandfather. Wow. When Ravi Garkon was born, he, didn't, he wasn't in a proper yeshiva. And the grandfather came home when Ravi Garkon was in second grade. And he pushed his son, Ravi Garkon's father, to send his son to Papa Yeshiva. Only because of Shurim Chamavadya. And he pushed and he pushed and he pushed and he pushed. And finally, what then ended up happening? He sent him to the Papa Yeshiva. And Bukh Hashem, Ravi Garkon was able to grow to who he is today. Now he's Mr. Kerr Abim and a level. He's helping the nation do Shurim. You can't even imagine his Gdullah. What he has. He has a building. He has everything you can possibly imagine. All because of what? Because Chamavadya says, I'm not, ever I'm not giving up. And he's 20 guys from Petah Tikva. Be a woman. I have so many things. He opened up the building. Be a woman, right? So according, you know what? I'll tell you after. But we still over here the importance of 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 caring for another human being. We have Jews, all of us over here. I tell you like this: What does it mean to care for another human being? What does it mean to care for another human being? Not only you want to see him succeed in his life, you want him to be prosperous, you want him to get married, you want him to have a happy life, but you also care about his spirituality. You also care and say. What can I do to bring this person closer? What can I do? I come to Shur every Thursday night. I come to Shur every Wednesday night. I come to Shur. Let me do everything in my power to bring another guy with me. 
Some guys over here, Baruch Hashem, they call me today. They told me, today I'm coming, I'm bringing a couple with me. I'm coming, I'm bringing another one with me. Baruch Hashem, they come and they try. As much as possible to call whoever they can. Come, bring one, bring one, bring one, bring one. And you never know. One guy you're going to bring, he's going to come, he might get inspired. Here's a shoe. Now forget my shoe, any shoe. He might get expired. What's going to happen now? He's going to be recurring. Every week, next thing you know, he becomes a big tzaddik. He's children a learning. Who's schooled is that? Who's schooled? Who's schooled? My brother. He's a rabbi in California. Went to Shiva nine years. What happened? One guy told him, Yada, let's go Wednesday night shurim. Can you imagine the reward? One guy told him, let's go Wednesday night shurim. And from that, okay, how are you going to know who's who? And what's going to be? You don't know. People will see me back in the day and see me today. Some guys will be testify. They never thought that we'd be, that we'd be here. Till today, I have guys who tell me straight up, I cannot, I, why should I can't believe it's you? I can't believe it's you. And I say, I also can't believe it's me. <laughs> I watched the videos back. I said, wow, he's good. Who's this guy? <laughs> no, I but that's what we're saying over here. Take care for one another. That's an important point. Because I could end it over here.